please be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone, my brothers and sisters. We welcome you to our service this morning. I can see some um, visitors that we have today. Welcome to Metropolitan Church. And it's good to see happy faces this morning. Uh, shall we all stand and greet each other a happy Sabbath day? What a beautiful day it is today and to be in church for God is with us amen amen what a wonderful sight to see a piece of heaven at this moment we have a few announcements actually just a couple of announcements on our bulletin. First is we, we are with our evangelistic crusade with Pastor Baisa. It's still ongoing. So um, we have one this evening starting at 6.30 until 8 o'clock. And we also have um, Wednesdays and Fridays at the same time, 6.30 to 8 p.m. So we are encouraging everyone to attend our evangelistic crusade. It is from October 27th to November 18th. Second announcement is our Christmas party for our Metropolitan Church on December 17th that would be at Marriott's at the Medical Center. So you can start, um, uh, for more inc information, please contact Ms. Rosie Paginto or Gemma Sarsosa. And then you can start giving your, um, uh, I think there's a fee for the adults, it's at $33.75. And for the kids, it's at 18 and, 18 and 75 cents. You can um, give a check and uh, just address it to Metropolitan Church and hand it to Rosie or Gemma. And according to Rosie, the check will be um, cleared after the event. So just take note of that one. It's $33.75 for the adults and $18.75 for the kids. We have a special discount rate for Marriott's courtesy of uh, our Auntie Rosie. So um, let me share a very short message that I've been pondering while driving to church today. Yesterday, our city experienced a very wonderful event, a historic event through the Houston Astros. And all of us were, were really delighted to know that um, after this difficult Hurricane Harvey, we stood up strong as a community. It was, it was a delight to see yesterday during the parade. I, I can see some of our friends in Facebook, they were there actually. And it was, it was a fun event. In connection to this, the Houston Astros won the World Series this year. And it was, it was how many years? For how many years? 56 years, is that correct? They won the World Series. Let me, let me parallel it to a battle that each of us are facing. Let's call this battle the Life Series. In this series, there are no three knockdown rules, I mean, Three strikeout rules. We're talking about baseball, not boxing. No three, no three strikeout rules. And every moment 
And every day, you get a chance to do a home run. Not by talent or skill, but by choice. Brothers and sisters, we long for that event in heaven. We're in, we would parade because we were victorious. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. This is the ultimate sport that we are participating. This is the ult ultimate battle that we are all facing to have that crown of life in heaven. Let us all stand and for a call to worship, open your um, hymnals to reading 817. We'll do a responsive reading. I will read the light print and you will read the bold print. The title of our reading is Christian Warfare. 817, reading 817. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power, put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will be able to stand up against the devil's evil tricks. So put on God's armor now. Then when the devil when the evil days come, when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And after fighting to the end, you will still hold your ground. At all times, carry faith as a shield, for which with it you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one, and accept salvation as a helmet, and the word of God as a sword which the Spirit gives you. And everyone, do all this in prayer, asking God for God's help. Pray on every occasion as the Spirit leads. For this reason, keep alert and never give up. Pray always for all God's people. Amen. God of creation, ancient of days, we worship you, our God, our voices raise. with one heart, with one song of praise, and never glorify you, Lord, all of our days, ever glorify you, Lord, and all of our days. Let us pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, it is with joy in our heart that we come before you today. Knowing by faith that the promise in the Bible when two or three are together, you are there, is a reality today. We ask for forgiveness of our sin. We open our heart and we ask that you speak to us today. That our life won't be the same and we will be like Jesus. Father, we came today to this place answering your calling to the Holy Spirit. Whatever situation that we're facing, let's declare the victory in Jesus' name. And let us all be filled by your presence as we worship your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. Are you awake? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good job. All right. So in the last few weeks, we've learned about, well, some of the 28 ways that God shows us that he loves us. Do you remember what they were? Yes, that's right. We learn about the Trinity, which is God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We also learned about how important the Bible is, right? And last week, Ati Adrian showed you guys how Jesus saves us, right? How he can make us whole again. Do you remember that egg? Did you remember that? That was last week, right? Okay. So, now, just because God can save us, and just because God can clean us, look, Jesus can cleanse us from our sins, does that mean we can keep on sinning? No. 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 Let me ask you that again. Does that mean we can keep on sinning? No. no. And how do we do that? How can we stop ourselves from, um, from sinning? Now, I have a story to tell you. Well, first of all, let me ask you a question. Who in here have parents at home? Those are your earthly parents, right? And who in here has a heavenly father? Raise your hand. That's everyone. All right. So there are things that we do to show our earthly parents that we love them. Is that right? There's also ways we can show our heavenly father that we love him. Now, my question to you is, are you guys growing? Yeah. Who's growing? Raise your hand. Growing every day. Now, the question is, who's growing spiritually? <laughs> what? What does that mean? That means you're growing in Christ. Who's growing in Christ? There you go. Now, who's growing spiritually? That's right. Now, some of you might wonder, I'm not sure if I'm growing spiritually, and I don't exactly know what that is. Well, let me tell you what that is. Uri, I need, let's see, Hazel's one. Can I have three volunteers? So, Caitlin, Mia, and Trisha. Can you guys stand up over here? Over here. Come over to me. Now, can you guys read? Who knows how to read? All right. Who knows their letters? I need you. Oh, sorry. Oh, bless you. And Caitlin. Now, what does this tell you? And we're going to show the parents, too, what this is. Can everybody read what this says? Grow. Grow. What are the letters? Now, can you remember that for me? Yeah, that's easy, right? That's what you do every day. You grow. Now, G actually stands for, flip the picture for me. What is that? Going to church. That's what G stands for. It's going to church. And R says to read the Bible. And what do you have to do every time you read the Bible? You have to pray so the Holy Spirit can help you understand what God is trying to tell you. Now, oh, what does that picture say? Or what does that picture tell you? Obey, obey that's right. It doesn't say obey, but they know what this means. So, obey your parents. That also means you have to obey your Heavenly Father. And you have to obey what the Bible tells you. And lastly, does anybody know what this means? Parents, what does this letter mean? Show people. It has to start with the letter W. I don't hear it. It's, it's 
It's witnessing. You have to witness to others. That's another fancy word for telling others about Jesus. That was okay. That that probably that picture probably wasn't as good. <laughs> All right. So, what do we have to do to grow spiritually? Go to church, read your Bible and pray, obey your parents and God, and witness to others. Tell others about Jesus. Now, who in here wants to pray? Haley, or Hazel, sorry. Okay, everybody kneel down and pray. Oh, actually, our memory verse is found in... Let me see. Our memory verse is found in Philippians 2, 5. It says, in your lives, you must think and act like Jesus Christ. Can you repeat that with me? It says, in your lives, you must think and act like... Jesus Christ, found in Philippians 2, 5. All right, we're going to pray. Thank you, God, for this beautiful day that you've given us. And help all the boys and girls to be nice and be kind to others. And please help all of us to be nice and kind to other people that we know. And please help us to be good boys and girls and have fun. We're places that people invite you. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath, everyone. A famous evangelist once said, Paying tithe is a secret privilege. When you pay tithe, you show gratitude to all that God has given you and return him a portion of what you have received. Your attitude is important in paying tithe. Pay it because you love the Lord and have faith in him. Pay it willingly with a thankful heart. Pay it first, even when you think you do not have enough money to meet your other needs. Doing so will help you develop greater faith, overcome selfishness, and be more receptive to the spirit. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. With new wine. Shall we request our deacons to collect our tithes and offerings?
Father, kind Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful Sabbath day. Thank you for the tithes and offerings. Blessed Lord, for the furtherance of your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. morning. I hope everyone is having a happy Sabbath. Do you know that music is a divine gift? Martin Luther had said the gift of language combined with the gift of song was given to us that he should proclaim the word of God through music. Basically, our body is God's temple for worship. Every words we say, every song we sing, and every act we do should bring honor and glory. We invite you this morning with your worshipful spirit to sing us the song, Oh How I Love Jesus. next song, I would like to invite all the kids from uh, junior down to cradle roll to please stand. Don't be shy, please stand. And you guys will lead us in this uh, singing. Praise him, praise him, all you little children. Can we ask you guys to come to the front? Can I call all the little kids to come to the front? Ready?
So worship is part of a healthy spiritual life and we worship an amazing God. So I would like you guys to read with me. I need to worship because without it, I lose a sense of wonder and gratitude and plan through life with blinders on. So basically, we walk through life without a vision. Oftentimes, God uses worship to recalibrate ourselves, to refocus our priorities and reestablish on where our security lies. It could be from our stable job, from your education, or from your profitable business. But just like a book, there's always that last page that says the end. And you know the author would write that words, last words, anytime. And sometimes even without notice. So guys, we need to worship to practice for eternity. Let us all stand and sing our opening hymn, Here I Am to Worship.
Can we request the congregation to kneel down, please? Our Lord Almighty, our Creator and our Redeemer, we praise you for your loving kindness shown to us every minute of our lives. We adore you for your great concern to our well-being, leaving all our all your comforts and your throne in heaven just to save us as a sinner. Dear Jesus, of all these sacrifices, many times we take for granted all your cares for us. We do what we like and we are entangled with the word. Yes, you told us to be engaged to them, to lead them at your feet, but we should avoid to be swallowed up by the world. Instead, to be a light to them. Help us to dedicate our lives, Lord. Please forgive us all our, our unrighteousness and to reconnect, reconnect our lives to you day by day. For you are the source of our strength. To vitally connected with you, to resist the unhallowed self-indulgence, self-love, and temptations to sin, to realize our great need for you. Thank you for the protection and probation through the week that we receive. Dear Jesus, we raise today our sister Nida and sister Lynette for their health concern and for others who come to visit your people for their spiritual needs and health issues also. Touch them with your healing hand that they will trust you and abide with you and may find peace and assurance for your great sacrifice, love, care to your people. As we face all the challenges, trials that's happening today and even in abroad, it melts our hearts in fear to seek you, Lord. We are aware that you are coming, that your coming is very, very sure. The end time prophecy is rapidly fulfilling now. But we rest in, your, in you, for you are our God, who can deliver us from all these things. For you have promised us that when these things happen you today to lift our head for our salvation through it now. Thank you, Lord, for that assurance. We are, we are so blessed that we have a God who can give us peace in the midst of chaos, to look upon you as our risen Savior, to hold on you, who can only carry all our perplexities and burdens in life. Help us to learn to live a holy life, for we are looking forward to the spending life of eternity with you. May the people who glance at us may recognize that we have been with Jesus by the way we talk, by the way we dress, by the way we eat and worship you. May, the, may Jesus be seen in us day by day, not only on Sabbath day. To have a prayerful life and only then we will be victorious in our Christian journey. Please bless Pastor Hansen, who will, who will deliver your message to your people. Please speak, speak to him and announce his lips to talk boldly with your father. Be with us and help us to accept your entire message with humility, with power and purity in our hearts, that our souls will be healed so that the Holy Spirit can dwell in us that we so much need it our souls today. Help us to grow and focus on you, to spend time on our needs and less time for planning for ourselves, to be more committed and dedicated to serve you on this last moment left in our probationary time. Thank you, Lord, for touching our lives, and it will thrills our hearts knowing that you are coming very, very soon. It might be today, tonight, or tomorrow, or any time. Let us be ready for that wonderful reunion, seeing our Lord Jesus Christ face to face. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, church. Praise God for that song. Amen. Happy Sabbath. May I request everyone to stand as we read the word of God. Our scripture reading for today is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 17 to 19. And if children, then ears, ears of God, and joint ears with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. May all we be blessed. May we all be blessed as we receive the full messages of the God prepared for us today. Please be seated. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We're going to have to set. In the children's language, and I'm going to try to translate. <laughs> Is the Lord. Well, we're blessed and uh, happy that we are here in the house of the Lord. Amen. You know, we take so many things for granted. We have a place that we can call his house of worship. Amen? Amen. That is a blessing. And also to be in his presence is also a blessing. I know, I know many, many people are going through difficult difficulties. And many people are going into different situations in life. How many of you? Do you love your kids? Do you love them? In a way that you will give your life for them? If that is you, imagine God. So he loves you more than what you think. And let me tell you that he is in control of your life. He is there. Always. Always he's there. So keep the hope. And always remind that, that God is in control. Amen? Praise the Lord. One day, a man asked a question. So what is the difference in a world that people call the good things weird and the bad things they call it normal? In a world when the new ideas and philosophies in life now domain the group of families in life and societies, when the values have changed and the truth now is subjective, the principle or the biblical principle right now and the respect that we used to have for the Christian values are gone. Now, it doesn't matter what you wear. It doesn't matter what you see. It doesn't matter what you watch. It doesn't matter what you sing. It doesn't matter what you eat. It doesn't even matter what you believe. Everybody needs to respect you. And the concept of the presence of God and the fear of God is banished. I don't know if you remember, and it's actually there in the Bible, but bringing this into our time, but we used to have more concept of the fear of the Lord in his house. And this place, which we call the house of worship, we know by faith that he is present. Amen? Do you remember what used to happen in the past in the Bible when somebody get close to his tabernacle and he was not clean? But nowadays people think, well, this is just a building. And now we define that what makes this place a church is the people. But let me tell you, when you sanctify a place for God, that place belongs to him. The same thing that when you dedicate your heart and your life for God, your life belongs to him. So the question is, what is the difference then? And I want to use an example. And I was thinking, I'm praying, let me use a good one. Let me compare One thing that we Filipinos love. 
Let me compare pancit with spaghetti. Right? So let, let, let's, let's use our mind and, and try to compare that. Is pancit a pasta, yes or no? Is a spaghetti a pasta, yes or no? They're a pasta. Right? So, apparently, they're the same. So, in order for you to eat the pancit, you need to boil it. Yes or no? So, in order for you to eat the spaghetti, you need to boil it. Correct? And in order for you to eat it, you need to add ingredients to the pancit, which is some of them are vegetables, correct? And tomato sauce, sometimes. Some, I said sometimes. <laughs> Forgive me, I said sometimes. No. <laughs> okay, let's remove this uh, tomato sauce then. Just a little bit. What well, tomatoes then in peat? Uh, tomato, no? No. No tomato then. Let me rewind. That's only happened in a uh, uh, live program. So, but then, <laughs> in order for you to eat, to eat the spaghetti, you need to ask also to add uh, ingredients, right? And uh, so, right now, the spaghetti and the pancit look the same. But let me ask you a question. Is a spaghetti and pancit the same, yes or no? No. So what is the difference? <laughs> Somebody said tomato sauce, and that could be true. And that could be true. How about the texture? Is that different? So when you see in a spaghetti and when you see a pancit, do you see the difference? Yes, yes or no? Is the difference clear? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Well, let me use another example of something that is good with a pancit. Something that we Filipinos sometimes add to the pancit. And it, we call it the calamansit. <laughs> right? So, the calamansit, and let's talk about the tangerine. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait a second. Are they a fruit, yes or no? Yes, yes they are. If you peel a calamansi and you peel a tangerine and you put it next to each other, no matter in the size, but the form, do they look alike, yes or no? Yes. A little bit, that's true, but they look alike. And they inside have seeds, yes or no? And don't tell me no because I have a calamansi tree in my house. <laughs> when my daughter was born, the nurse the Lord sent me a Filipino nurse. And uh, when she knew who I was and everything, the next day she came and she said, before you leave, I have something for you. And I said, okay, what do you have? She said, you need to come with me to my car. And I was like, mm hmm well, well, since we're Filipino, we trust each other. <laughs> so I went with her and she gave me two trees, one calamansi. seed, and one tangerine tree. And she said, plant it so they can grow with your daughter. And they said, you are a real Filipino girl. <laughs> yes. And, oh man, I love the calamansi tree because it's, it's all year. That thing is growing. A lot of calamansi everywhere. January to, to December is always giving me some fruits. So praise the Lord. So, but even though they look alike, are they the same? So what is the difference? The taste. What else? The size. The color. Are we good here? Good. The color. So, the difference in elements in fruits, even though they look alike, there's some differences there. Are we clear on this? 
So what is the difference? When we live in a society right now that is so difficult to identify who we are, what is the difference when you live in a society, and I've been asking these questions even in youth meetings and leadership meetings, and I ask, if you have a, a group of 100 people, how do you identify a Seventh-day Adventist? And it's really hard. Some people say, oh, maybe because if it's a lady, she will wear a long skirt. I used to, do you think that? Because there's a lot of people who use and they're not. It's because of the way they talk. Is that true? It's because of the way they look. Is that true? But let me tell you one thing. And I'm going to start from, because I look at the clock and I'm running out of time. God created the different, the different to make the difference. And no amen, but I'm going to say amen. Because let me tell you that if you are different, he will make you that way so that you can be the difference. Keep that in mind. So, the Lord in Matthew chapter 5 verse 13 says, you are the salt of the earth. How many of you like salt in your food? We have a little difference, even though it's the same, the way we eat canning. For those who are not Filipino like me, canning is rice. Canning, the rice, canning, 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 canning. I don't know, it's so many dialects, people say me canning, all the things say canning, and I'm just going to use my own dialect, canning. In, in the Philippines, you boil the rice without, without salt. In my country, we put salt. Right? And if you, and if they come and eat your rice, they will say, something is missing. And they will ask you secretly, And now we're talking about rice. So the reason why the Lord says that you and I, and I are the salt of the earth is because we are the one who make this world be what it is. If not, if you look what is going on around the world, people are getting lost. And people are desperate. Last Friday, last Friday, not yesterday, the week before, after we left the crusade. By the way, please come tonight, 6.30 to 8. It will be fantastic. Wonderful topics. Pray, bring your friends and come to learn. And also to bring some people so they can know the knowledge of truth and salvation. Last Friday, when I was going to the house, it took me two hours and 30 minutes to get to my house. And I was calling my wife desperate. I don't know what is wrong, but when I was, when I took the, street, I took the beltway so I can get quick to my house. But it's packed. It took me two hours. And I called her, look to see what happened. She couldn't find until later she told me that the reason why it was like that was because somebody was trying to commit suicide on the beltway. You saw on the news this young girl who actually committed suicide. She, she tried to commit suicide. She jumped. She got into a car. The guy who was driving, or the lady who was driving, got killed, but she was, she was safe. So things are happening. The mental health right now it's unstable. And the only hope that this world has is Jesus Christ. And the only hope that they have is that one day they know somebody who knows the truth 
who can come to them and tell them not everything is lost when you know Jesus. So that's why you and I are the salt. Because we give the taste to what this war is. It doesn't matter who was elected. I know that Jesus is coming soon. It doesn't matter what is going around the world. I know that he is coming soon. And we give the taste because we bring hope to this world. Remember this four guys. What are their names? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and who else? And when they were brought to this place, were they different, yes or no? In a way that at the end we're seeing the Bible, that in any business needing wisdom and good sense about which the king put questions to, to them, he saw that they were ten times better and all the wonder workers and users of secret arts in all his kingdom. And that was because they were what? Difference because they knew who? They knew God. I have a question that is coming from my heart. When your co-workers see you, do they see somebody that is different? When your neighbors see you, do they see somebody that is different? When, when, when you go to the store, will they see somebody that is different? When you are walking and doing exercise, will people, when they talk to you, see that you are different? The true believers were delivered from the spiritual death. And Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 says there, As for you, you were dead in your transgression and sins. What does that mean? What it means to be dead, spiritual dead? Well, if you have a dead body here and you put some music, are they, gonna hear, are they going to listen to the music? Please listen to this. Listen to this. Is the dead body is here. And you put a music. Are they going to listen to the music? Yes or no? no? Are they going to enjoy the music? Yes or no? Are they going to react to that music? Yes or no? Are they going to have a good time with the music? Yes or no? But if you are alive and we put some music here, are you going to hear the music? Yes or no? Are you going to enjoy the music? Yes or no? So, when you don't enjoy the presence in the house of the Lord, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Because we were delivered from the spiritual death, and when we knew Christ, we are not dead anymore. Not anymore. Because when we come to this place, remember that we said before that we are here because we have a special time with the Lord. It doesn't matter who preach. It doesn't matter who come and teach. It doesn't matter who sing. We praise God. And we enjoy everything because we're able to. We're able to. And we're able to understand and rejoice in his presence. But if, if we are not doing that. It's because something is wrong. Something is wrong. Why? Because the natural man cannot accept the things that come from the spiritual. Nor can he understand them. It is impossible because they are spiritual. What? Discern. So unless we are spiritually alive, we cannot see that. We cannot feel that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible says, The men without the spirit, what? does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. For they are foolish to him. And he cannot understand them because they are what? Spiritual discernment. The true believers were delivered from the life of disobedience. And Ephesians says there, 
in which you used to live when you followed the way of the world, but not anymore because now you know Jesus Christ. There are a few things here. Number one is, before Christ, I remember, before Christ, believers follow the way of this world. Let me, let me say that again. Let me say that again. But before, let me read Ephesians 2.2. It says that you used to live in disobedience when you followed the way of this world in the past. But not anymore when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. So it's not possible because this was before we knew Christ. We were following the way of this world. And the problem nowadays is that there is a confusion. People don't know who we are because we're kind of mixed. They don't know the difference. They don't know if we are different. Because in some occasions, we look like them. But the good news is that this was before Christ. And now after Christ, our life is different. Number two is, before Christ, believers follow the way of the devil. The rulers of the kingdom of the earth, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. But that was in the past. But the problem is that if we get mixed with the society, then who do you think we're following? Who do you think we're following? Before Christ, believers follow the lust and the desires of the flesh. But we know that our old self was crucified with who? With him. So it is no longer having dominion in my life. Galatians 5, 16 says, Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The true believers were delivered from what? Then moving forward, unbelievers have a natural disposition toward anger, malice, bitterness, and how what? Romans 8, 7 says, the sinful mind is hostile to who? To God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. It can't do it. The true believer have experienced a spiritual resurrection. And I want to stop here for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to finish. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 and 5 says this. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead. In transgression, it is by grace that you have been saved. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the people who are being spiritual are resurrected. Love who? What it means to love God? What does it mean to love God? When you love God, does that show yes or no? When you love, when you love a person, can people see that you love that person, yes or no? Because if you love your wife, you're always with her, you hold her hands, you kiss her, and then, and then you have kids. Right? That's how the way we show our love. And if you don't understand that, look at it in the dictionary. So when we love God, when we love God, when we love God, that will show us. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his suffering becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. People who have been spiritually resurrected love the people of God. 
In John 3, 14, the Bible says there very clear. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love. Because what? Because we love. Because we love. I like that the Bible says clear that we love our brother. It doesn't say because I like my brother. You don't need to like them. You need to love them. The problem here is not to like somebody because they agree with you. You need to love them. Because who's love? Who is love? So who is in your life? So if God is love and he is in me, then I need to show love. And that is sometimes why we cannot see the difference. Because we say that we love God, but we don't love each other. Because anyone who does not love remaining, I feel so sorry for those who doesn't love me. I tell my wife, if you want to keep alive, keep loving me. You better love me. There's no excuse. Okay? There's no excuse. In the dictionary, dislike and things like that are removed. It's only love. Amen? Number three, people who have been a spirit of to study and obey the word of God. Whosoever has my command and obey them, he is the one who, and I want you to read it because I'm not, I am not making this up. The Bible is clear there that says if you love God, you study what? His word. If you love him. God says, if you love me, what? Obey my. He who loves me will be loved by my father. And two will love him and show myself to him. He who does not love me will not obey my petitions. The true believer has been united with Christ. And you know what? The true believers will glorify God's grace in the coming ages. Let me go back for a minute to this one. True believers have been united with Christ. You know, we have a big problem. And the big problem is this. How many of you love God? Let me see your hands. How many of you have give, give your life to Jesus Christ? Let me see your hands. Well, it turns out that I love God too. And I gave my life to Jesus Christ too. Right? Well, if you don't like me, I'm so sorry for you because you and I have the same blood. Do you know that? Because his blood cleansed you. And the same blood is going through my vein. Because the apostle Paul said, it's not me, but it's now Jesus who is living in me. So that is why you and I call each other my brother and my sister. It's not just a title that the church gives you when you get baptized. No. It's not like doing Mr. or Mrs. or a doctor or engineer. No, no. It's because you and I are really brothers and sisters. Somebody, when I was saying this, they said, then why do you marry your sister? I said, no, 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 that's a different story. <laughs> that, I, that, that means my brother and sister in love. But before I, 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 I marry her, I said, Lord, set us apart so we can get together. In love. And that is what it makes us unique. How does this work? It turns out that the only way that the glory of God can go through ages is when we teach our children the good news of salvation. So it is your responsibility as parents because you love God to teach your children to love him too. 
and to show that love in your life so that they can learn the way that they need to, tr to truly love the Lord. So, now I have a question. So what is the difference then? What is the difference between somebody that is not Christian and somebody that is Christian? Because if you ask them, do you, do you know God? You say yes. Do you love the Lord? They say yes. So what is the difference? What is the difference? What is the difference? The difference is to live according to what you believe. Can I say that again? To live according to what you and I believe. And if we deny self and allow him to take control, that will show. And they will see Jesus in me and they will see Jesus in you. And that is the way that they will see the difference in our life. And we need to make this practical. It's not because we are that they will think we are. It's because when we show, they will know who we are. Because they will see Jesus in our life. But we need to be practical. We need to show that. We need to show that. Why was I saying this? Let me tell you this. We live in a community. And the reason why the Lord put this church in this place, it was not because we have a beautiful building. It was not even so we can have a, a, a place that we can call church. The reason why the Lord put this church in this place is because there is a lot of people in this community that need to know about Jesus Christ. So what are we doing? Are we showing the difference or no? The same thing in your neighborhood. What are we doing? There's so many people that need to know about the truth of salvation. There's so many people around this place that are lost and they need to know about Jesus. Let me tell you the experience we had a couple of weeks ago. When was that, Brian? Two weeks ago? Three weeks ago. We went to the Quo Valley area and we started uh, giving invitations about the Health Expo and the Crusade. And I was so inspired and touched when I saw some of our young kids knocking on doors. And I was so inspired and touched when I saw at least three families that were talking to our kids and they were not afraid. In one of them, I actually had to wait for about 10 to 15 minutes because they were having a conversation. And when they left the house, I asked them, what happened? They said, oh, he was just asking a question that we were answering. We were having a conversation. Conversation about what? About why we believe in God. And I was like, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I met, I met a Filipino doctor in one house. I knocked. The man opened the door. I introduced myself, and I looked at his face, and I said, this guy looks familiar. And when we talked, he told me, you know, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to go. Uh, and then we start talking, and he's a retired doctor. And he said, the reason why I'm not going to be able to go is because I'm going to the Philippines. He said, when, when? This coming weekend. I said, well, praise the Lord. So I asked him, how long is it from here to the Philippines? And he said, about 16 hours, something like that. Or more, depending. Right? So I said, that means you're going to have a lot of time, right? He said, yes. So take this book and read it with you. In 16 hours, at least, read a chapter. And he said, I love to read. And this looks very interesting. I said, well, read it. And when you come back, we're going to have a conversation with a pancit in front of ours. He was like, okay, deal, done deal. So there's a lot of people out there that need to know the truth of salvation. So what are we doing? Let's make this practical. This is a place 
This is our art of salvation. We have an opportunity right now. We start on October 27. We're going to finish in November 18. There's still more people waiting. And we can go and just invite them. People say, I get discouraged because they don't come. That's not your problem. That's not my problem. We pray. We go. We invite. Their decision is theirs. But let me tell you, when Jesus comes, and when they've been asked, at least they cannot give excuse because we were there. Because we were there. And this place is a light for this community. And you and I are the instrument that the Lord is using to bring the knowledge of salvation to those people. The same thing in your neighborhood. The same thing in your workplace. Use the time to show them who Jesus is. Not by words, but at least by your testimony. And let the power of God show in your life so people will know who the true God is. My brothers and sisters, this society is messed up. See around and you will see what I'm talking about. Read the news and you will see what I'm talking about. Watch the news and you will see what I'm talking about. And you know that the answer is you and me because people are looking for answers. People are looking for hope. People are looking for salvation. And you and I are the instrument that the Lord is using to tell them that there is a God who is coming soon and he will take us home. He offered a place where things that is happening right now won't happen again. My question is, are we ready to take the challenge? Are we ready to take the challenge? Are we ready to take the challenge? So let's be the different, the difference or different for the honor and glory of God. Amen. I want to invite you to please stand up with me. Let us all sing together 213. This is our theme song. 213. I believe this. I love this song. This is something that I sing when I own myself in the car and anyways inside my heart. Because I know I believe, and I want this to happen very soon, that Jesus is coming again. Let us all ring, sing together. <laughs> Lift up the trumpet, la la, let it ring. Jesus is coming. Mean again, cheer of the pilgrims, be joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Echo he toss, proclaim ye plains. Jesus is coming again. Coming in glory, the land that was slain. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Heaven's on earth, the vast one and Jesus is coming again. The Antenna of the Lord, Jesus is coming again, coming again, coming again, Jesus is coming again. Nature's and angry by this we do know, Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increases, men run and will flow. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again.
Amen, amen, amen. The 12 disciples were different. And the reason why was because they had Jesus in their life. And the way they showed that, it was the way they ministered to people. Because they knew the truth and salvation, which was Jesus Christ. And the same truth is the one that you and I know. And the same God and the same Lord and the same Jesus who is in our heart. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this wonderful truth about salvation. Lord, even though we might look the same, the difference is that you is the one who line us. So help us to show the love, the truth, the salvation to those who are living in darkness. Send the Holy Spirit to lead us, to take us to the place where people are voicing out their needs. When people are looking for answers and when people are praying, looking for solutions for their problems. We are here. You call us to this ministry. We are here. Besides that we have problems too, but we know that in you we have hope and we have victory. But those people who are waiting for you, those people who are waiting for us, take us to those places to invite them. But send the Holy Spirit before us so they can be receptive to the message. And that they can give their lives to you and that their name will be written in the book of life. Thank you, Lord, for this secret task and for this wonderful opportunity to be servant of this wonderful gospel. In Jesus' name we pray.